and we're here with Jeff Goodman. Jeff, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to show us your your carbon neutral house. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is our, our house. We've been here since 2004. In that time, we've made a number of changes to the home to reduce our energy needs. And as we'll see later on, uh, we actually produce more energy than, uh, than we use for the home. If you want to come inside, we'll show you around and let you guys know how we did it. All right, let's take a look. All right. This is our geothermal system. This is your geothermal system. So this is where you're taking heat from the earth and, and using it to, to heat your home. Exactly. So the, the system is essentially a, a heat pump. I like to refer to it as a, a glorified refrigerator. It's exceptionally simple. It takes liquid from, uh, from outdoors and runs it through the system. Now this always comes into our house at about four degrees Celsius. Okay. In the summer months, it'll put heat from the house into that liquid and send it back out underground at a hotter temperature so that it dissipates the heat underground. In the winter months, it does exactly the opposite. It pulls heat out of that liquid, heats the house with it, and sends the colder liquid back underground so that the system maintains the heat of the house and all the needs for the home. And as well, when it does that, the system will also do our hot water. And so it's, it's heating your air temperature, it's heating your water. Mm -hmm. What's the cost of something like this? What's like, how much does it cost to install? When do you get that money back? How does this break down? Sure, so when we did this, uh, I mean, we did this back in 2005. Turnkey, it was maybe 23,000 at the time. Okay. Now there were no rebates at the time, but what happened was the, the, the operating costs on the system are so low, we saved all that money that we were spending on oil to power a geothermal system instead. We essentially made that extra $13,000 back over the course of seven years. Now I like to talk about lifetime costs too. Remember that oil furnace that we got rid of, it was only 10 years old and it was done. And these things are meant to run 20 plus years. So the payback time was only seven years and we have a system that's going to last much longer than an oil furnace would have. Uh, well, listen, I know there's not just these big machines that you have here, but there's a lot of little ways that, that you started out with being energy efficient, and saving money and saving energy. Why don't you show me some of those? Absolutely. Okay. And so, Jeff, here we are in your living room, dining room area. One of the things that you keep saying is that it's not about the big machines, it's about the little things. So what little things do you do around here to, to remain not just carbon neutral, but you're actually saying you produce more energy than you actually consume? Yeah, it, it's critical. You, you mentioned it exactly right. The starting point is not the, the big technology. The starting point is the low-hanging fruit. So all of our lights are LEDs. Um, when we went to, to buy appliances, this refrigerator at the time was Canada's most efficient refrigerator. Um, where we can save energy, we do, uh, and that includes not just the appliance purchases, but sometimes your habits as well. You'll notice we don't keep our coffee maker plugged in. You know, it's it's trivial the amount of electricity it uses to power the clock, but we still unplug it. And the same is true for the microwave. It's on a switch so that it's not drawing power 24/7. We removed our doorbell. People, your doorbell. Doorbell. People don't realize a doorbell will draw power 24/7, just waiting for somebody to push the button when they could just knock. You know, and, and these things are very small dollar amounts of savings and, and consequently small emission savings, but some of them are bigger. A uh, television set, for example, and the satellite box and all the stuff that goes with that. You know, people who have those things, they notice that they get hot, you know, when it's right. not even in use. It's because they're very wasteful and they're forever drawing power 24 7. So we put our television and our home theater system on a power bar. At the end of the night, when we're finished watching TV, we turn it off. If we're on vacation, it's off. You know, these things are, are small dollar amounts. I mean, the TV alone, by doing that, we save $5 a month. But you start adding them up around all of the other things we've done in the house and all of the other phantom loads we eliminated, you're pushing $20 a month savings on your electricity bill just by changing your habits and getting rid of these phantom loads, the things that aren't doing anything. Okay, so indoors, LED lights, uh, turn off everything you don't use. Cancel your doorbell. <laughs> now, as you can. now uh, there's one more piece of this, which is where your uh, power is coming from. Sure. So let's go take a look at that. Let's go have a look. All right. So Jeff, this isn't uh, a little solar panel that you might see on a a boat or or something like that. This thing's massive. Yeah. This is uh, this is 45 solar panels, and it's on a, a three-dimensional tracker, so it uh, follows the sun as okay. it moves across the sky every day. The, uh, the panels we put in back in 2010, okay. uh, at the time a system like that on a tracker, you know, that was about $100,000. Wow. But I don't want to send that message to your viewers because I want to tell them, you know, in that 10 years, solar prices have plummeted. You could get that kind of power output in terms of solar panels probably for 17 to 20,000. Um, the, the panels have dropped that much. And what's the life expectancy of those panels these days? How long can you expect to actually sure. benefit from that? The solar panels have a warranty of 20 to 25 years. 
they'll last that long. And I have friends who've got solar panels they installed in the 70s, and they still get the rated output from those. Okay, so if you put solar panels on your roof today, you'd spend about $18,000 for the whole install. Uh, it would last you more than two decades. When do you start to see that money come back to you? Well, the payback time, you're looking 12 to 15 years. So less time than the solar panels are going to live for. I mean, we've talked about lifetime costs already, and this is the sort of big example. You know, you can pay for your energy up front. This is just a, a way of buying your power in advance. Okay, we've been talking about a lot of practical stuff, a lot of necessary stuff, but I know uh, you're also uh, a fun guy. Well, let's open the pod bay doors and see what we got here. <laughs> Okay, so we're not just talking cars here. Okay, when you said you had an electric motorcycle, I, I didn't picture this. No. <laughs> this looks like like a, a real powerful motorcycle. Yeah, this is a, a performance motorcycle. It, it really does mean business. You know, it's it's got all kinds of power. It uh, doesn't leave you wanting for anything. It's got the ABS brakes and the brake. It's got all the stuff that you're going to want on the road and on the highway. And how, long, how far will this get you before you run out of battery power? For my riding, it will take me 150 kilometers. Okay. Uh, I can get uh, from my, my home in Kempville to Gatineau and back. Uh, and the good news on that is it's about 60 cents to do it. You know I'm going to ask you to ride this later. You got it. <laughs> now, you have uh, an, a, a vehicle here too. Uh, this, I guess, is your main mode of transportation. How far are we with electric vehicles? How much does it cost you? This is the Chevrolet Bolt, and it has a, a range of 400 kilometers, okay. and it's got fast charging. We've taken it to Niagara Falls uh, and back, stopping one time to charge it. You know, uh, there, there's nothing you're giving up anymore with an electric car. If you go to Kingston or something like that, mm -hmm. I mean, do you know, do you have to plot out where the charging stations are? Uh, there's actually an app for that. You know, okay. what used to be range anxiety is just a little bit of planning and an app on your phone. It's incredible what you've done with the place. Uh, you've got some toys, you've got energy coming in, you're not paying for electricity. I think a lot of people are going to be fascinated. There is one more thing I got to do. Oh, no clutch, no gear shift. You just turn that one and hang on. That's it. That's all you have to do. Try not to smile too wide. I want to thank you for the experience. Oh my gosh, thanks for coming by.